We're here at Jack Trice Stadium, home in the fall to over 60,000 screaming fans. Now what's really cool is that this field, fully grass, I can guarantee you it looks better than your lawn, but you don't have a team of people taking care of it every week. It's mowed three times a week, and I'll tell you when we get down on the field exactly what makes this place so unique. I'm really excited for you guys to come and visit because you get to come down on the field when you're here. Okay, I'm gonna read from my notes down here because I wanna make sure that I get this right. Um, the field here was grown at Iowa State at the Horticulture Research Station. The drainage, like I talked about before, is actually pretty unique in that it drains 33 gallons per minute per square foot because there's 12 inches of sand underneath this grass Underneath the sand is drain tile and gravel. Uh, this is safer than synthetic turf because the field gives. Um, now here's how it's taken care of. It's core aerated five times before the season. It's mowed at an inch and a quarter three times a week. And then, you know how you'll be on, on TV, you'll see how sometimes the field has different colors maybe every five yards or so. That's because there's a roller on the back of the mower. Um, it's not different types of grasses. This is all 100% bluegrass. <clears throat> so then um, to keep it looking good all year long, it is fertilized one week and then fungicide the next week. And they have to look out at the forecast a couple weeks ahead of time because what they'll do is they'll reseed. If they see that in two or three weeks that the weather's gonna get kind of nasty, they'll reseed that week. So then the player's cleats grind the seeds into the soil so that in two or three weeks, when that nasty weather's there, then the grass has fully germinated, it's starting to come up, and the field looks as good as new. Um, at the end of the season, sometimes we have Thanksgiving games here, what they'll do is they'll roll out a giant blanket called a growth cover. And what that does, it extends the growing season so that the field looks as good uh, in November as what it does in August and September. Now to take care of all this, you might think that there's a giant team. Well, there's two full-time staff and six student helpers. That means that the people who take care of this field during the year in a couple years, they can go out and they can take care of NFL stadiums, major league stadiums, or other college fields. You guys, when you're here on the tour, get to go down here on the field. This is, <laughs> this is really cool. I think you're gonna like it. We're here today at Ryman Gardens. It's a 17 acre public garden on the campus of Iowa State University. Ryman Gardens is going to be a stop on several of the tours of the NACAA 2023 conference in Des Moines, Iowa. Right now, we're in the Christina Ryman butterfly wing, which I hope you can see is actually shaped like a butterfly wing. It's 2,500 square feet filled with tropical plants and as you can see, butterflies. We're here at the Rose Garden of Ryman Gardens. As you can see though, there's more than just roses. There's wisteria all along the trellises here. There's a peony over there. There's lots of annuals. As vibrant as what it looks right now, it's gonna look even better in August when you're here. Um, there's more than just roses though. There's a, a sculpture of Iowa State's Campanile. There is, as you can see below you, a nice fountain with a little river in it. Uh, and there's gonna be lots of pollinators out here when you're here too. And speaking of pollinators, there's going to be a great display next year featuring stained glass exhibits from an artist in Arizona. I'm looking forward to seeing it next year. I hope you guys are too. This is Sycamore Falls, a relatively new addition to Ryman Gardens. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit different than the Rose Garden filled with trees, sycamores, of course, behind you. Uh, some nice sculptures around here. 
including a giant tarantula. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, there's a weeping uh, larch next to you here. There's a Korean maple back there, Japanese maple, uh, just all sorts of different plants from all over the world here at Ryman Gardens. So like I said before, I really hope you guys are excited about this tour because this is going to be a great stop. As part of the ISU Horticulture Tour, you're going to visit the ISU Horticulture Research Station just outside of campus in Ames. Now, in addition to horticulture, they also do entomology studies here and studies on animals like tree swallows, fish, and birds. At any one time, there's over a hundred different research projects going on. As you can see right now, we're in an apple orchard. And this is, this is as big as it gets. These are as tall as these trees get. They're grown on dwarf rootstock so that you can minimize the labor it takes to harvest the apples. And they're grown on a trellis system, which means that the apples are produced three years earlier than what they would normally be produced. And one great thing, about the consumable apples that are grown here is they all end up in the bellies of students. The ISU Horticulture and Research Station is one of 15 different farms throughout the state of Iowa where the public can come and learn about all of the research that's done on Iowa State's campus. Right now, we're in a high tunnel. As you can see, it's a little bit brighter because I'm wearing sunglasses than what it was when we were outside in the orchard. And I can also tell you, it's quite a bit warmer in here too. This is a great way to grow high value crops like tomatoes and peppers, which you see here. Not only does it extend the growing season on the beginning, it also extends the growing season on the end. And if you look below you, you'll see the black drip tape. That is a very efficient way to water plants inside of a facility that gets as warm as what this does. Another one of the major crops grown at the Horticulture Research Station are grapes. As you can see, they're just starting to emerge. Uh, when you think of Iowa, you don't necessarily think of grapes, but we have a growing, growing industry with wineries and grapes. Mm -hmm. 